values. So make a new object. Uh, yay, yay, yay. Make a new object, and we're going to use. Um, this is going to be for PFFT. So the first things we'll need is an FFT in, which is where all the stuff where the actually we'll need to give that a number or Max doesn't like us putting an FFT in without a number FFT in this is where the um, audio is going to be coming in and actually turned into F, uh, sort of uh, frequency domain value instead of time domain so this is where it all happens um, and all the stuff I'm going to do from now on is just basically accessing our table that we just wrote our, our buffer which if we look at the right um, outlet of FFT in, it says FFT bin index. So we can uh, use index tilde um, to access <coughs> this buffer called fun bag using these FFT bin index indices coming out here. All right, we're going to use two FFT outs. So FFT out with a one and another FFT out. I just alt dragged that to make another one. Uh, FFT out 2. And we're going to multiply basically these things called real and imaginary values to stick back into our real and imaginary values down here after some uh, multiplication through via this uh, buffer here, the fun bag buffer. Alright, we're going to need um, a multiply tilde, or oh, actually a couple, one for the real, one for the imaginary, um, and we can, well, I'll just put this together and, and, and you can decide whether this is real or not, um, or imaginary. Am I imaginary? Am I imaginaring it? Alright, so here's, uh, yeah, I'm multiplying, here's the real and imaginary coming out here um, to go into my um, FFT out. That's going to be my right hand um, signal value and if we look at, again at this buffer uh, it might sort of seem logical but uh, we'd have to look back at that first page to see that yeah that would be kind of corresponding according to my graph to being um, the right output and for the left output we can do exactly the same but just invert this value coming out of index so a new object uh, this is one of those weird objects that's exclamation mark minus tilde, which is an inversion tilde. Um, oh, yes, uh, I guess. Minus. Uh, so it's one minus whatever signal's coming into it. All right. So it's just inverting this value coming out of the index is all I really wanted to do. And we can do the same. I'm just going to grab these two multipliers here. And I'm going to do the same as I did on that other side, but I'm going to do it with this inverted value here, multiplying that. So whatever's not, basically, whatever's not coming out um, this side is going out this side, is really what this whole dealio is about here. Okay. And that's all hooked up. Very good. All right. Now we can save this as something. Um, it probably looks a little like... Uh, I don't know, spandex comes to, to uh, mind. Let's save this as something. I'm going to put this on my desktop, sure. I'll call it um, fill FFT filt or something like that. FFT filt, sure. Uh, just so I know where it is and what the name of it is. And then go back over to my um, original patcher, which is untitled at the moment. And as we've seen in the past, if I just try and make a new um, PFFT, which is what we're going to load that thing called FFT filt into, and actually we'll give it a couple of other arguments like uh, the size <coughs> of the FFT, um, the number of bins in the FFT, which is this 1024 thing, and I'll give it an overlap value, which is the number of, well, overlaps. You can read the tutorial on FFT filter, FFT in um, in the whole um, MSP tutorials, All right? And of course, we've got this error message here, like we have every other time we tried to do this kind of thing, and it says there's no patcher called that. So what we have to do is we need to save this, not save this as I don't know tutorial. Yeah, sure. And then 
Once it's saved in the same location as this thing called FFT filt, we should be able to just create it. Yay, that worked. And Max stopped complaining. Awesome. Okay. Now I'm going to just hook this stuff up to some kind of way of listening to what goes on here. Um, I'm going to use a, a SF Play for my sound. This is all very old stuff. I'm sure you've all got this sort of thing. I'm going to open a file called jongli.aif, which we've done a million times before. I'm going to put a comma there to say loop one. And I'm going to put another comma to say one. So, you know, those commas in messages break the message out into separate parts. So open jongli.aif with a comma, and then loop one with a comma, which puts it into loop mode, and one will start it playing. Very good. That's going to work. I have a feeling. All right. And an object, like, a, actually, let's use our easy DAC. I keep forgetting. I'm, I'm more of a DAC man myself, but in these tutorials, I keep using easy DAC, so I'll, I'll put that on there for consistency. There's nothing like consistency. All right. If I lock this and listen to it, and to actually hit this message box up here might be a good start too. Right. And what you should find is that you can change, um, you know, actually it sounds pretty cool if you just do it kind of, you know, all broken up style. Um, but yeah, you're breaking up basically all of your, um, you know, these are sort of low frequencies over here going to the left and these be like mid-range frequencies going sort of left-ish and then some high frequencies going right. Basically bake, breaking up um, the frequency spectrum across the left to right um, panning. Anyway, that's for you to check out it, with headphones. I'll just do, I'm going to make one more um, variation on this theme before I leave you. Um, you might want to keep this, so we'll, we'll just build on top of this thing. Um, FFT Filt, if you aren't already have your FFT Filt open, what I'm going to do is make it so that this, um, this panning sort of shape that we have here actually moves across um, from left to right as it, as it, um, it, as it moves kind of cyclically moving across or cycling around, I guess, might be a better way of putting it. So I'm going to make a new object here called Phasor. And I'm sure we've seen a Phasor. I'll put a low frequency for my Phasor because I don't want it zipping around too fast. Um, this Phasor goes from 0 to 1, so we want to uh, make that uh, range 0 to 1024-ish. So multiply that Phasor by 1024. Eh, and we'll probably want to now add this um, FFT bin index in there as well. So I'm going to add these two things together, the outlet of the bin index and that's a plus tilde, and this here, uh, multiplication of the phaser. And the last thing, because we want this range to stay within um, 0 to 1023-ish, uh, last thing we'd probably want to do here after this addition is uh, something that will keep it within the range 0 to 1023, which a new object with um, this modulus thing, which is modulus tilde this time, um, which modulus tilde 1024 is good. That means that anything um, like 1025 will become uh, 1 and 1026 will become 2. It's like the remainder after the division. I think we already went into that in some kind of depth. All right, I might save this as something else because uh, maybe I don't want to destroy my FFT filt since I went to so much trouble to build that. I'll call it FFT filt 2. And over here, we'll check it out by putting FFT filt 2 in our PFFT. So that'll load that. Okay. So now we have magically uh, a magic kind of panning shape. Um, which is going to be panning or, you know, going across the stereo field at this rate 10 times, uh, no, once every 10 seconds with that frequency. And I guess that's kind of all I've got to do on this tutorial, and I'll check you next time with tutorial 17.